go. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Night's Talk on Rogers TV. I am your host, Rob Leonard. And as I said uh, in episode number one, really excited to be times during last week's show, but uh, uh, everybody really excited to get back after the 18-month layoff. Uh, hockey is back in Meaford with the Knights of Meaford of the GMHL. Uh, let's get right to it. The Knights have had three games this season. Uh, last game was this past Thursday night in Meaford. And uh, the Knights of Meaford, uh, we haven't got any video on that yet because uh, we haven't been able to get into the building, but we are going to be there this coming Thursday night. So I'll just give you a rundown on Thursday night's game. Uh, the Knights were up against the always tough uh, Bradford Rattlers, and the Knights would fall by a score of 8-3 to three in that one. Uh, notably for the Knights, uh, three different goal scorers, uh, Jordan DeGau, uh, Hayden Phillip would score his third of the season uh, on a power play. And a gentleman that's going to be with us uh, later on in the show scored his very first junior hockey goal, and we're excited to be able to talk to him about that. Um, Riley Lavalley from the Sudbury area scored his very first goal in the GMHL. So as I said, we'll talk to him about that later on. So... Um, yeah, it looked like it was a tough night for the for the Knights, but the, you know what? Honestly, the Bradford Rattlers are uh, they always have a, a strong team going into any season, and it's early. The Knights have only played three games. I'm, they're going to get plenty of opportunity to get revenge on uh, on the Rattlers, and they've done it in the past, and I'm certain that they're going to be able to do it again. So, uh, let's take a look at the league standings, if we could, Mark. And let's flip over my pages here. <laughs> All right, let's take a look now. Now, the Tomiskaming Titans, uh, ever since they've come into the league, they've been really strong and no different this year. They've uh, taken off now. Uh, nine games played, eight wins, one loss for 16 points. Uh, those Bradford Rattlers that we just spoke about, undefeated at 5-0. and oh. They've only played five games. They have 10 points sitting in second. Uh, the Knights opponent coming up this Thursday night, West Nipissing Lynx, who were sitting on top for uh, the first five games of the season, have fallen into third now at five and two. Uh, they also have uh, 10 points. And we look further down the list. Let's go down. The Knights are sitting currently in second last place. But as you can see, they've only played three games. And uh, whereas the rest of the league, uh, and that's the way it is every year. Every year at the start of the GMHL season, the Knights are always the ones that get to the, a few games at the start of the season. For uh, Usually it's because of uh, rink availability in Meaford. Uh, they always have the big arts and craft show that goes on every year, so that delays uh, the start for the Knights. But the Knights are sitting with one win, one loss, and one overtime loss. So uh, plenty of time to, to go uh, for the Knights. And uh, again, it's, you know, tight standings really early in the season. So, but again, totally shocked at, to see who's sitting in last place with the New Tech Civics. Uh, that is uh, unheard of. Uh, the Civics have always had a strong club. So obviously there's some, uh, you know, some rebuilding. And as most teams have done this year with, uh, with the big layoff we've had, but uh, I'm sure at some point they'll get things going. Let's switch now over to the South Division. Now, uh, I was thinking last week, we've got Durham in first place. So let's uh, not confuse that with Durham, Ontario, which isn't far from uh, from Meaford. Uh, it's actually Durham region. So uh, down in the Oshawa area, they're sitting on top undefeated at 7-0, 14 points. And North York Renegade, Renegades having a good start at 6-1 for 12 points. Now, in fourth spot sitting there is Plattsville. The Plattsville Lakers, they... They uh, were actually, I believe, the London team. They they came out of uh, moved from London to Plattsville, and they struggled for a lot of a lot of years, uh, for quite a few years, uh, operating out of London. Owner Jeff's there, and um, but they're having a great start to their season, sitting in fourth place right now, at uh, four wins and four losses. So uh, good for Plattsville. Uh, and uh, again, another surprise. I'm looking at St. George sitting in fifth. 
uh, three wins, three losses. St. George has always had a strong, strong team. So uh, they may be just a little late in getting it going, but oh, only eight games in. So they get, or sorry, six games in for St. George. They've got plenty of time to get it going as well. So, uh, and another shocker for me, Tottenham sitting in the last spot at 0-8. So uh, yeah, uh, as I said, on both sides, you got New Tech on, in the North and uh, you've got Tottenham uh, in the South. They're both uh, looking for their first wins of the season. So. Uh, now let's take a look at the at the Knights' leading scores, if we could, Mark. Uh, sitting on top uh, for the Knights, uh, we've got I think we got four players sitting on uh, sitting at the top there with uh, 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 sorry uh, yeah three, with three points each. Um, uh, Brendan Sidlowski, Hayden Phillip, Jordan Degau, and Mason McNeil uh, all sitting there with three points apiece. And uh, we've got four more players uh, tied with two points apiece. So again, early in the season, only three games, uh, you know, and uh, the Knights have plenty of time to, to add to those totals. Um, let's take a look at the goaltenders. I ignored the goaltender last week and uh, the goaltenders. Uh, David Reed, currently with a 1.85 goals against average and a, nine, a 0.939 save percentage. Those are excellent numbers for the GMHL. Uh, it, it's only uh, one win, but uh, but those are excellent numbers uh, for David Reed. So uh, now if we could take a look at the league's leading scores. Uh, sitting on top, we have somebody from the North sitting on top. We actually have the top two spots are taken up by, by players from Temiskaming. We got uh, Charles Sipiot, uh, sitting on top with 12 goals and 12 assists, 24 points in nine games. And David Fontaine, also from the Titans, six goals, 16 assists, 22 points uh, in nine games. Uh, then uh, sitting uh, again, the the South well represented in there. And then sitting in the, in the 10th spot is a Bradford Rattler. That's uh, Florian Schaller in five games played. He's got six goals and 10 assists for 16 points. So uh, again, a good mix, uh, good mix of North and South sitting there. Uh, all right, so now let's take a look at the upcoming games for the Knights of Meaford. And as I mentioned, the next game this coming Thursday night, October 28th uh, at the Meaford St. Vincent Community Center. Uh, we're going to be there. Rogers TV will be there uh, to tape the game, uh, Mark Perry and myself, and uh, West Nipissing will be in town, and they will be the uh, the Knights opponent for, for that game. Really looking forward to that and uh, getting to meet the players. I haven't had a chance to meet anybody yet, so hopefully we can say hello. And um, let's see, on October the 30th, the Knights will have their first away game of the season in uh, Gravenhurst against South Muskoka Shield. Then after that, things, as I mentioned in last week's show, they've got a tough November coming up. The Knights have got, uh, take a look at uh, November 4th, 5th, and 7th. They've got uh, three games and four nights, uh, starting off at home against Bill Marie. Uh, then they will be away against uh, West Nipissing, and uh, they'll get another shot at the Bradford Rattlers this time in Bradford on the 7th of November. And... Um, yeah, interestingly enough, 12 games in November, seven of those games will be on the road. So the boys will be getting plenty of bus time uh, and those uh, road meals, <laughs> excuse me, um, in the month of November. So it's nice to get a lot of those, uh, you know, a lot of those road games out of the way in November when there isn't so much snow, uh, et cetera. All right, so um, that's going to do it for all of the information for this week. Now it's time to meet the Knights. And uh, as I said, I've got my special guests are uh, Riley Lavalle and Martin Badura. And uh, gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Great to have you on the show, guys. All right, uh, now um, let's start with Martin. Martin, uh, you played with the Knights. Of course, you didn't play last year, but you were here the year before uh, in a 40-game season, your first season with the Knights. You had 10 goals, 10 assists for 20 points. So um, you had a great season uh, in your first year with the Knights. Uh, can you think back, or is that too far to think back 
you know, uh, as to what your first year with the Knights was like and, and how that is uh, going to help you uh, this, this coming season? You know, uh, the rings, I'm from Czech Republic, so uh, the rings over here are a bit smaller than in Europe. So I just got to get used to a small ice. Uh, it's like different style of game. So it's like more hitting and uh, more shots. So it takes time to get used to it. But uh, I think I proved myself in that a little bit. Uh, then I compare it to three years ago. So I think uh, that's the main thing for me. And I like it over here. It's like a lot of good people over here. It's like a uh, type of family for me. So it's like I love it here. And uh, that was uh, leading to my next question, uh, being that you're from the Czech Republic, and uh, uh, were you able to get on the ice the last 18 months? Was there ice time available for you? or Because uh, I know it wasn't here, but uh, how were things in that regard in the Czech Republic? Uh, I used to play like seven games last, last year, so... Yeah, it was bad. It was just practicing, and you know, if you just practice and no playing games, you just embarrassing it. It's just, yeah, I just didn't like the practicing. I just need to play games, so it was kind of frustrating for me. It must feel great to get back into actual game action then this year. Yeah, exactly. All right, let's switch over to uh, Riley Lavalley. Riley. You uh, come from uh, the Sudbury area. You're not actually Sudbury, um, but from the Sudbury area, 17 years old. And as I mentioned earlier in the show, you scored your very first goal uh, of the season with the Knights as a 17-year-old rookie. Walk us through that goal. Tell us, tell us, uh, you know how it uh, how it transpired and and the feelings after putting that one in the net. Uh, so I blocked a shot at the point and then got a breakaway. So in my mind, I just didn't want to miss. I didn't want to fumble the puck or anything. And uh, along the whole way, I seen this five hole wide open. So I just tucked it right in the five hole and it felt amazing. Finally cracking the shell and yeah, looking forward to get more this season. That's fantastic. And I, just picturing it in my head, exactly what happened, but a, a, a great, uh, you know, defensive play on your part to create that opportunity for yourself uh, to get the breakaway. And there's some guys that are not good at breakaways, but you obviously, uh, you obviously had your spot picked early and you were able to put it home. Yeah, exactly. I've seen it along the whole way. Okay, Riley, let's talk about uh, prior to coming to Meaford, where did you play and at what level? Uh, so I always played uh, with Nickel City. I stuck around Sudbury. Uh, I played within the AAA program up until Bantam, Bantam age, and then I moved down to AA. And uh, it was always a good time there. I uh, good friendships, good in hockey. It was it was pretty fun. And then this season came up and I came down here. Always uh, good teams coming out of that Sudbury area, but. Uh... So darn cold up there. There isn't much else to do, is there? <laughs> no, not really. Got the rink at home. And it's just hockey down there. Right. Okay. So, um, uh, what was I? Yeah. So, uh, how do you? How are you finding the transition then? Uh, coming from from double A, triple A, uh, midget into uh, junior hockey, and the GMHL is a little different because you are playing against 21, 20, and twenty one year olds, right? Whereas <laughs> So these guys are about three or four years ahead of you in, uh, in development and size. So how, how are you finding that adjustment? Yeah, so uh, I came here to learn. I'm adapting to the system for sure. It's uh, a lot quicker. There's bigger bodies for sure. So just adapting to my game and adapting to the game and working with the teammates and just learning from the, the vets and the older guys, that's just what I came for and it's planning out pretty well right now. Really, you know, you hear a lot of uh, a lot of coaches, a lot of experts say that you're only as good as your opponent, basically. So it, you're putting yourself up against older and more experienced players. That that should only help elevate your game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so um, let's talk about uh, maybe don't want to talk about that game against Bradford the other night, but it was a an eight three loss. Uh, looking at the, at the scoring. There was some fight in that Meaford team. I, I actually wasn't at the game, but I could see in the second period, you just came out and uh, you scored two goals in that second period. It looked like 
uh, you weren't giving up and you weren't going to go away lightly. So uh, you kind of took it to the Rattlers after being down by a couple, two nothing, I think it was in the first period. Uh, and then you battled back with two of your own in the second. So uh, to me, looking at that just from a stat standpoint, that uh, there's some fight in this team and you guys aren't going to give up. Yeah, I think uh, I think we're a good group overall. We're gonna fight all season, try to get to the top. We're never gonna give up. Uh, yes, yeah, we're a great group of, group of guys and work as a team. Fantastic. Okay, Martin, I'll switch that over to you, Martin. Um, and again, looking at the stats, I take a look at uh, uh, let's say that uh, the first game of the season, your six five shootout loss. You actually had a five three lead going into the third period, but maybe let your foot off the gas a little bit was, uh, uh, would it be right in that assumption? And you kind of let, uh, let South Muskoka back into the game and they, and they came away with the two points. Uh, that again, probably another learning curve for the team. Yeah, exactly. Uh, like I said to guys uh, in the locker room, we gotta be more responsible. Uh, exactly in a D zone, uh, we gotta be more, more aggressive to uh, take a pack of our enemies and uh, play with that because I don't think we are uh, we are a bad team in Ozone. We just got to keep up it better in uh, the zone. That's our main thing that we got to prove. And each one of those each one of those games of scenarios uh, in my mind, I, I look at it, it it's a great uh, even though you don't like the result, it still is uh, it's a learning uh, moment for the team to go, okay, we were up five three. We we got our foot in their throats. We got to keep it there, right? So, uh, yeah, exactly. As yeah, I said, and, responsibility. And knowing that, uh, you know, when you come up against a tough team like the Bradford Rattlers, uh, you take a look at the past, and I know the Knights can beat the Rattlers <laughs> at any time. So, again, you guys have plenty of time uh, in this season uh, to get another few more cracks at that team and, and uh, put them away. Yeah, hopefully we can uh, score a couple goals with them and uh, and show them that we are a pretty good team with uh, good skill. And yeah, let's see. Looking forward to it. Yes, and it's a uh, you know it, the season does go by pretty quickly, and uh, you know, <laughs> uh, but but again, it's uh, um, you know like I said, I've seen. I've seen a few nights teams over the years and, uh, you know, they always seem to come through in the end. So uh, we'll go back to Riley just for a moment. Riley, uh, you were described to me as a, you were uh, compared to a guy that played on the nights a couple of years ago. His name was Brennan Watson and Brennan Watson uh, was a fan favorite in Meaford. Uh, he was a guy that uh, wasn't afraid to get into those dirty areas, get in, get in the corners. He was, uh, you know, in that nasty spot in front of the net, battling for position, creating havoc in front of the net. So, uh, and that's how you were described to me. Do you think that's a fair assessment of you, Riley? Yeah, that's how I like to uh, base my game. Just I'm not the biggest guy out there, so I just like to to dig and not give up. And I think that's that's a great compliment. That uh, because to me, uh, you know, I got to know uh, Brennan for uh, you know a few years that he was with the Knights and. Uh, he was a first class guy and uh, and as, as I said when he got on the ice the game face was on and uh you know he got as as I said he got into those those dirty spots and he wasn't afraid to do it so uh, I think that's a that's a huge compliment to you as a player so I look forward to seeing you on Thursday night so and uh Martin Vadura uh you were described as just being an all-round player and uh, an older guy that uh, um you know that brings something to the room and you bring that experience uh, that the other players may not have, and you're willing to share it with your teammates. So, uh, you know, again, uh, that's that's a huge compliment coming from the team. Yeah, as as you said, uh, I try to give uh, everything as uh, as I can uh, to young players to try to help them out with every situation that uh, will be uh, at the game. So, yeah, I'm just trying to help them out and uh, make some points and. Uh, yeah, help the team make better and hopefully make a playoffs and uh, battle for a win. All right, guys. Thank you so much for doing this. It was a pleasure uh, meeting both of you, and I really super look forward to, to meeting you in person on uh, Thursday night.
The game against West Nipissing Links, you have a chance to, uh, to get two points away from those fellows and uh, uh, move your way up into the standings. And as I said, you got a huge, huge road trips uh, coming up in, in the month of November. So again, I can't wait to see you on Thursday night. Thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, thank, thank you for you. having us on. All right, guys, take care. We'll see you on Thursday. All right, All right. Uh, that's going to do it for this week's Night's Talk. I'm your host, Rob Leonard, for producer Mark Perry. Thank you so much for being here. And as I said, we will be in the building on Thursday night, this coming Thursday night, versus the West Nipissing Links to tape the game, and we'll make it for, available for you the following day on the Friday, and everybody can get a look at, uh, if you can't get down to the rink, trust Rogers TV. We'll make sure that uh, that you get to see them on TV. So. All right, again, I'm Rob Leonard for producer Mark Perry. See you next time on Nice Talk.